What is up guys? Welcome to Treehouse Off-Road. I'm Finn. Thanks for watching. In today's video, I'm going to be installing a brand new exhaust system from the headers all the way to the tailpipe on my 2006 Sequoia. So I'll be getting rid of this, and I'll be getting rid of this. At least until it's time to smog my truck. All right, peoples. The last project I did was the rear axle. Still working on the front axle. I do this little bits at a time because if not, I'd get overwhelmed and crazy. What we're going to talk about today is the exhaust. I want to get rid of the coffin. I want to do a new exhaust for two reasons. One, I want it to sound better. Second reason is I want to do a proper three link in the rear here, which means longer links, which means the upper link on the passenger side is going to need to be extended and land somewhere right where the lift is sitting on the inside of the frame. And this giant coffin of a muffler is right in the way. I mean, look at the size of this thing. Why Toyota? Why? So I collaborated with a few companies for this project, guys. So let's just take a quick second and go through all the stuff we're going to use. First up is a set of short tube headers from a company called Flash Shark. Now these are for the 01 through 04 Sequoias and Tundras, so the non-VVTI versions. But I have an idea on how to make it work with my 2006. Next, we have a Flowmaster 50 style muffler with a 2.5 inch inlet and outlet. Significantly smaller than my current muffler and it should sound pretty good too. And last up from Flash Shark is this 2.5 inch 8 piece custom exhaust kit. Comes with two 4 foot sections, two 45 degree bends, two 90 degree bends, and two 180s made of aluminum plated iron. This next kit is from Dynavox and it's the same eight piece custom builder kit, only in stainless steel. If I could go back, I would have got them both in stainless steel, but these companies sent this stuff for free and beggars can't be choosers. This Dynavox stuff looks really good and it was really easy to weld too. And last up is a company called Speed Lab. They sent a pair of electric exhaust cutouts. The Toyota 4.7 liter engine sounds amazing with straight pipes on it, but you can't just drive it like that down the street. Not in California anyways. So this product allows you to just flip a switch and get that sound and then flip it back and it sounds just like stock again. It's a complete kit and it comes with everything you see right here. I also had to buy a couple things for this project, the first of which being this Hewitt Technologies SAIS bypass kit. I'll go into greater detail on what this kit does later on in the video. But basically it clears error codes and gets rid of a pretty useless smog feature on the 2005 and up VVTi 4.7 liters. And then Amazon came through with some exhaust hanging support rods and rubber bushings, as well as some stainless steel 2.5 inch V-band exhaust clamps from Evil Energy. All right, so the very first thing I did for this exhaust project was PB blasted this thing twice a day for an entire week. And that includes the manifolds, these three on each side, and then both of those. I even hit this guy back here. I think that made my life a lot easier. I tested the three bolts on each side to make sure they would loosen, and they all did. Now I'm coming back here. These are looking a lot worse. Exhaust leak, you can tell. Another small exhaust leak. These look like they've been underwater next to the Titanic. So aside from this one at the end of the muffler, I was able to get all of these started. Next up, I'm gonna to try to loosen all the manifold bolts. I have a drivetrain lift. As you can see, I have a spacer right here that I made, and that was to get the oil pan up so I could shove this second gen Sequoia diff up there, because it's considerably larger. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolts off the exhaust manifold. There's eight on each one. Before going ahead and just removing these bolts, I got a wrench on each one and made sure I could at least turn it a little bit. This is my daily driver after all. And if one of those bolts was stripped out, I would have liked to know at the very beginning and not halfway through. Got the stud on that one, but that's okay. All right, I got seven of the eight out. Now I'm gonna take this engine mount out if anyone knows a trick on how to remove that last manifold bolt without removing the engine mount, please leave it in the comments. So here's my situation. The truck's obviously on a lift and then I got a transmission jack underneath the engine holding it up while I do this. All the PB blaster from the last week. So there's that last bolt right there. This one's giving me hell, so I'm gonna impact it. OK, 
Okay, and I'm going to remove that final bolt in the middle. So now I think I get it. This looks to be the secondary air intake system, or SAIS. These plates look exactly like they go on there. Hope this pulls away. That's my hope. You can't pull the manifold straight off, which you need to do to get past these studs because of these, and you can't pull it this way because of these. So I ended up asking my buddy Michael for some help here. You need to pry back on the SAIS pipe and then out on the manifold at the same time. So here's the flash arc header above the factory manifold and you can clearly see the difference. Uh, each of the exhaust ports has a small port above it and then a collector that runs the entire length of the manifold and hooks into that flange in the back of the engine on each side. This is the SAIS system and my idea is to simply block them off. When you buy a set of long tube headers from Dirty Deeds Industries, that's exactly what they do. So I'm just gonna make some tabs out of quarter inch plate and then weld them to the headers. So first I'll need a profile of this manifold. And anything that didn't transfer with the hammer, I'm just gonna trace out with a pen. And now we got a pretty good idea of what our tab should look like. So now I'm just going to cut them out of cardboard, trace them onto some steel, and then cut them out again. And there we have it. This is actually the perfect chance to test out this fixture table we just got from Harbor Freight. They finally had them in stock. On the other header, when I welded these, I welded them on both sides, which left a lot for me to grind off on this inner side, creating an uneven sealing surface. On this one, I'm only gonna weld on the outside, and that copper spray gasket should seal up those tiny cracks just fine. So I took a second to clean up the stud threads with a wire wheel, and now I'm gonna install this Hewitt Technologies block off plate. And guys, I know I said I was gonna talk more about the Hewitt Technologies kit, but all I needed out of that kit was these block off plates. Turns out when you completely remove your catalytic converters, there's not much you can do in the way of clearing error codes. So I'll leave a link to the Hewitt Technologies YouTube channel because they do a much better job of explaining what their products do than I could ever do here. and the fitment on these flash arc headers was perfect. Putting the O2 sensor back in. So I have these two flanges from Michael's non-VVTI 2UZ, and these are gonna be perfect to start my custom exhaust. The only problem is these studs. I'll be able to weld some two and a half inch exhaust right to them. So I think my drilling was pretty much spot on. Look at this, just pushed out the stud. Quick test fit on the headers and it's looking good.
All right, so here we're gonna use the Flash Arc 45 degree piece. I should have went with the Dynavox Stainless 45. It would have looked a lot better coming off that stainless header, but I don't feel like going back and redoing it at this point. All right, so I got both set of headers on, and I got the downpipes coming out. Here's the driver's side, passenger. Now here I had to extend the front O2 sensor, it wasn't long enough anymore. I made sure to use stock Toyota wiring of the same gauge because these things, as far as I know, operate on resistance. Then I went ahead and wrapped it in some high temp conduit. And now it's time to get to work removing this giant muffler. I'm using an old Toyota upper control arm bolt. Michael had the idea to save these and use them as drifts and I use it constantly. Slight size difference between mufflers. And now all this stuff goes into storage until it's time for me to get my truck smogged again. Now it's time to start cutting up some of that two and a half inch flash arc exhaust pipe. See how they're diving down? That bugs the crap out of me. I thought I had the angle up there perfect, but apparently I don't. What I'm gonna do next is try to get this aimed up. I'm gonna cut a slit up here, bend it, and then weld it, because I should find my angle. I'm lining the bottom up with the frame, and then the top up with the pipe. Five and a half degrees. So what I did there was subtract that 5.5 degrees from 180 to get the angle that I need, 174.5. It actually looks perfect. That's hot. So that's looking a lot better. Now I'm just gonna keep building this thing, putting it together piece by piece. I'm gonna use a 90 degree bend to go around the transfer case. Then I'm gonna meet back up with that long down tube coming from the passenger side header. So I'm trying to shape this by hand with the grinder to match the profile of the pipe that it's gonna to connect to. And it took a while, but I think it came out decent. I'll be able to fill that in with weld, no problem. And I'm gonna throw my first bypass right there behind the transfer case. I really wanted to put the two bypasses in those two straight sections right after the headers dump on each side, but I have a transmission skid plate and a transfer case skid plate, and I just couldn't make it all work together, sadly. There just wasn't room. So now I'm going to weld the 90 degree elbow to the bypass. All right, looking good so far, so I'm gonna mark where I need to cut a hole in the passenger side pipe. I just gotta make sure I don't go too far out, so I still have some meat on the bone to weld. To create this hole, I used a combination of a step bit, a cutting wheel, and a die grinder. And for whatever reason, when I went to fit it up the second time, it just didn't seem to fit as well. I'm actually pretty happy with that so far. So the next bypass is gonna go right there. And then of course after that, the muffler. I got my broomstick mocked up here as a rear upper link. As long as I steer clear of that, I should be fine. All right, let's take a second and put one of these exhaust cutouts together. So you got the Y pipe, two gaskets, three bolts, the V band, the output pipe, the actuator, and the flange. So we'll start with the Y pipe, grab a gasket, then your actuator. It can go in any direction, whatever best suits your application. One more gasket. Then the output flange, which is threaded. Thread your bolts in, tighten them down. Grab your V-band, pop your output pipe on there, tighten up the V-band, and you're good to go. 
but luckily the actuators come closed so you can do your whole exhaust build and then hook up your electrical a week later if you want. So now that it's built, let's take down that chunk of exhaust and weld it in place. You guys, I've been welding stainless. I have been using one of these respirators under my welding helmet. I'm gonna reuse this mount for the passenger side, and I'm also gonna reuse this mount on the driver's side. Something like that. So after the muffler, there's a small piece of pipe, and then I'm gonna use the Dynavox stainless for the rest of the tailpipe. I'm gonna go up over this cross member and stay high and then dump in the back or behind the back tire. Get this hanger welded on. And as always, whenever we're welding on a vehicle, we hook up the surge protector so we don't fry any sensitive electronics. This one's called the Dent Fix DF601A, and it's worked great for many years. We're at a point now where the entire system is pretty much tacked together, so now it's time to install some of these V-bands. We're gonna weld in three of these things so we can take the whole system apart easily. Play all those wires again, dude. Like a peacock. Also, you can have your gadgets and gizmos and your fancy sequoias. That wiring harness was from Michael's 2UZ that he's putting into his second gen 4Runner, and that project's almost done, so keep an eye out for that. So here's the system laid out on the ground, about ready to put those V bands in. Here I am just welding it up. I've welded exhaust once or twice, but it's mostly been used pipe that you know burns through real easy. This was a joy to weld. Here she is all welded up. There's those V-bands. This ended up distorting quite a bit actually, as you'll see here in a minute. It was a struggle getting it all put back together under the Sequoia, but we made it happen. These are the gaskets that go between the headers and the downpipes. This is O'Reilly's brand, if I remember correctly. For hardware, I just ended up using some fine thread grade eight, three eighths bolts. So that actually looked easy, but I do remember it being a pain in the ass. It's a lot easier with two people doing this thing though. Tightening up the flange bolts. Now I'm cutting the tailpipe. These Dynavox and Flash Arc exhaust kits, you can't beat them. Especially if you're new to exhaust, you, you've never really done it before and you don't have a mandrel bender. Look what you can make with just a grinder and a welder. I mean, for the price, you cannot beat it. Is it one long, clean, streamlined bend? No, but who cares? All the pieces just slip over one another. It's very satisfying. This was the first exhaust I ever made and I'm super happy with the way it came out.
I do want to put one more support from here to the frame. But man, I'm trying like hell to move this thing and I can't. Next, I'll show you how I ran my wiring for the cutout switches. So I did this at work and it was super noisy and the audio came out like crap. So I'm just going to do my best at a voice over here. This piece is the heat shield from the original manifold. And I slipped it over the frame there because there's some factory wiring that I didn't want to get too hot. I also wanted to run the cutout actuator wire right over the same cross member. So we go over that, over the drive shaft, meet up with the other cutout. I used a P-clamp on the underside of the body. Then I went up through a hole in the floor right under my feet. There's a little rubber gasket that I sliced open. You can see it there coming out. Now the Speedlab exhaust cutouts are awesome, but the switch they supplied is junk. I like to use the plastic rocker switches, so I migrated the wiring over to one of those. Okay, so I got the two leads coming up from the floor, turning into one lead, goes into the module. Coming off that, we have our switch, and then the third lead coming off the module is the positive and negative. I have a ground and an ignition hot already ran up through my center console. I work for a Sprinter van shop called Bannon. I do electrical for these RV conversions. So it's very strange to me that there's no fuse on this thing, but I am going to fuse it. I got this inline fuse holder. It's such a small operation that I'm gonna actually start with a one amp fuse. I've got the ignition hot disconnected here and I'm just gonna throw this in the middle. Now I'm just gonna coil everything up and stick it back there and then throw my switch plate on. All right, to finish this video off, I'll do some sound samples. I'll do a startup, I'll give it a few revs, and then I'll switch the cutouts on and do the same thing. The noise was so loud under here at a few points that the camera microphone cut out. So there's really nothing I can do about that, but I think it's enough so that you guys get the idea. driveway and give you an idea what it sounds like inside the cab. Keep in mind I'm missing a lot of sound insulation in the back. Doing about 45 miles an hour. Here we go. Highway. Gas in it.